The Gospel Story of the Garden of Gethsemane is used to absorb very as much as a child because it is it breaks in in the action and its human whimper made me wonder if some of the fantastic scenarios might after all be true. Jesus asks, in effect, do I have to go through this? This is an impressive and unforgettable question, and I, li I long ago decided that I would cheerfully wager my own soul on the belief that the only right answer to it is no. We cannot, like fearful ridden peasants of antiquity, hope to load all our crimes onto a scapegoat and then drive the hapless animal into the desert. Our everyday idiom quite sounded unlike in regarding a scapegoat with contempt. And religion is a scapegoat writ large. I can pay your debt, my love, if you have been imprudent, and if I like the hero of Sydney Carton, A Tale of Two Cities, I would even serve your term in prison or take your place on the scaffold. Greater love hath no man, but I cannot absolve you of your responsibilities. It would be immoral for me to offer and immoral for you to accept if the same offer made from another time and another world throughout the, the mediation of middlemen and accompanied by inducements loses all its grandeur and becomes a debased into wish thinking or worse a combination of blackmailing, blackmailing with bribery. The ultimate degeneration of all this into mere bargaining was made unpleasant by obvious and eh, unpleasant unpleasantly obvious by base Pascal whose theology is far short of sword we celebrate his wager and put it into a hucksterish form what do you have to lose if you believe in God and there is a God you win if you believe in him and you're wrong so what once I wrote a response to cunning piece of bet covering which took two forms first was a version of Burton's Bertrand Russell's hypothetical response to this reply to the hypothetical question. What will you say if you die and you confronted with your maker? His response? I should say, oh God, you did not give us enough evidence. My own reply, improbable, sir, I presume that if some, if not all, your main reputations is that you might prefer honest and convi convicted unbelief to the hypocritical and self-interest affestations of faith or smoke uh, tributes of bloody altars. I would not count on it. Pascal reminds me of the hypocrites and frauds who abound in through medic Jewish rationalizations. I do not work on the Sabbath yourself but pay someone else to do it you obey you obey the letter of the law but who's counting the Dalai Lama tells us you can visit a prostitute as long as someone else pays for her a Shia Mo Muslim offers temporary marriage and selling men permission to take a wife for an hour or two with the usual vows and divorce her when they are done half of the split splendid binding buildings in Rome or never have been raised if for the sale of indulgences and had not been so profitable. St. Peter himself was financed by a special one-time offer of that kind. The newest pope, the former Joseph Raxinger, recently attracted Catholics used to a festival by offering a remission of sins to those who would attend. This pathetic moral spectacle is not only necessarily if the original rules were one that would be possible to obey, but to totalitarian edicts 
which is beginning with revelations from absolute authority, and that it can be are enforced by fear and based on a sin that has been committed long ago, are added to regulations that are often immoral and impossible at the same time. The essential principle of a totalitarianism is to make laws that are impossible to obey. The resulting tyranny is even more impressive if it can be enforced by a privileged caste or a party which is highly zealous in its dedication of the error. Most of humanity throughout its history has dwelt and under this form of stupefying dictatorship, and a large portion of it still does.